on Old Hickory Reservoir, just below Cordell Hull Dam, trying to get Sauger brewed for our hatchery. We got two kinds of nets. We're experimental nets and just our Sauger brood nets. Uh -huh. These are a little longer, so we'll have to get a little more angle and I can get it across. Sure, we're, we're out here today getting these brood fish because uh, similar to striped bass with the, the dam systems, uh, it's really prohibited their natural ability to reproduce. So in order to produce a fishery, our job is to come out here and collect brood fish for our hatchery so the hatcheries can spawn these fish uh, artificially and then they can be reintroduced back into the water bodies for anglers to enjoy. Oh, this is just the anchor uh, used to keep the net on the bottom and then the float line will be on the top and that way the net stays set like it should vertical in the water column. Yeah, we can't electric fish uh, for sauger, it's just not an effective gear so we're out here today using gill nets. Uh, these fish often sit along the bottom of the, the river and uh, that's how fishermen fish for them too, they know they're down there. So yeah, we've got to use gill nets that stretch um, from roughly the bottom. They sit on the bottom and they come up maybe about 10 feet. And uh, that's, that's the best way that we can get them and, and the safest way and the way that's best for the fish. We'll see several year classes when we do this. I mean, you could have a year old and then some of the females we're getting could be three or four years old. And that's some of our best producing fish. And that's the thing too, you know, people don't realize how long it takes the fish to get to the size that they're catching. Some of the steps that we take to ensure that the fish are healthy is we, whenever we pull them up with the gill net, we, we take it easy on the fish. We usually, instead of trying to force that fish through the net, we'll cut, around, cut the netting around the fish to ease it out and then it goes straight into a holding tank so that that fish uh, is in the water, back in the water immediately, and it reduces the time that it's out of water. We're able to uh, tell the male and female on these fish by just squeezing their belly a little bit, and uh, the males will have uh, uh, milk come out of, of the vent, and then uh, you know the females will not have anything come out, and we just assume that those are eggs in there. Uh, when the females get really ripe, or the eggs get uh, close to being expelled, uh, you are able to push the eggs out, but that's, that's not our goal. So we're very gentle on the fish while we press on the belly. Optimally, you want two males to one female, but as tough as it is to get brewed like we're doing, if we can get one male to one female, we're doing pretty good. I haven't added the numbers yet, but we may actually be about at one-to-one -one this year, which is very uncommon. That's why we came early to catch the males before they start moving on out in March. I think we got 83 fish today, which is an awesome day. It's a really good day for us. And with those 83 fish, we'll produce hundreds of thousands of offspring that can be stocked back into Old Hickory.